Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Um, welcome to a very important program with a very important conversation. Governor Murphy likes to say, um, this is a woman who needs no introduction, but I'm gonna give her that introduction. She is Judy Persichelli, who is the commissioner of the Department of Health in the great state of New Jersey, who has been, along with the governor, leading this effort dealing with COVID. We're taping on the 13th of January. This will be seen later. I'll say what I said off air, uh, Commissioner. Thank you for everything that you're doing every day. You're welcome, Steve. Thank you for having me on. Let me ask you this. Again, this will be seen later in January, February, et cetera. Et cetera. We don't know where things are going to be. What would you say the biggest lesson you have learned as the Commissioner of Health and as a governmental leader in all this, almost a year into it. You're right, we're almost a year into it. In fact, it was March 4th when we saw our first case. And I keep reminding myself and everyone here at the department, this is a novel virus. It's something we've never seen before. Uh, and the one thing we've learned is that we really have to bolster up our resiliency. This will happen again. I hope it doesn't happen for 100 years, but we know it will happen again. This is a, a pandemic uh, that has been predicted uh, for a number of years. Uh, maybe not exactly this one, but we know, we know that viruses are, are amongst us and they can take off and they can jump from species and they can end up where we are today. And we did not have a stockpile in New Jersey, but worse, we did not have a national stockpile. So we were scrambling for equipment, for PPE, for gowns, for gloves. Um, we were not prepared in our state labs, public health labs, or the, the national labs uh, to be able to accept and turn around uh, testing results for a new virus in a very quick period of time. We were not prepared. So the biggest lesson I've learned, and there'll be a you know, a great after action report because I have notebooks full of thoughts and ideas is we need to always be prepared. Our resiliency and every part of our healthcare structure needs to be bolstered uh, because like I said, we need to be ready for the next one. And in that spirit, I want to remind folks of the uh, website. The CDC website is up and then as it relates to the uh, commissioner, even though she deals with the CDC all the time, the uh, COVID19.nj.gov backslash vaccine, correct, commissioner? Yes. Yes. So I'm, let me ask you this. Um, the role of public health in all this. Again, you want to check out what's going on every day. The commissioner is on all the time with the governor on NJ Spotlight News, Metro Focus, our public television partners. Check out what's going on every day. This program will be seen later. The role of public health, how do you believe it will be changed forever because of this pandemic, Commissioner? I think it's another lesson that we've learned. Uh, the public health infrastructure out in our communities um, ha has really been decimated over the years. No one pays attention to it. You have a measles outbreak and it makes headline and then it fades away. Uh, what they do every day at our local health departments to make sure that our environment is safe, to make sure that um, outbreaks uh, are mitigated and contained in a very quick period of time, they're saving lives every day. They need more help. We need more epidemiologists. We need to make sure that at the local level where all of this occurs, that that infrastructure never gets back to where it was, that it has to be built up and it should be maintained. Let me ask you this, Commissioner, as we are taping right now on the 13th of January, uh, announcements today, um, the, the categories are changing, the, the specs are changing. Go on the website, uh, the State Department of Health website, the COVID-19 website to find out exactly where, where things are. But let me ask you this. The governor has been saying, and I hope that this is outdated four weeks from now, I don't know, that the supply is not what it needs to be from the federal government. President Biden, who will be the president when this is seen and beyond, how much can a Biden administration and the federal government change the vaccine landscape in New Jersey over the next several months? Well, I have to say that Operation Warp Speed did work. It did deliver vaccines within such a, sh a short period of time by putting a lot of uh, funding, all hands on deck uh, to, this, to this virus. Uh, I think um, President-elect Biden 
understands how important it is, it is to, uh, I think it's the National Defense Act, to re reactivate that, get more money into vaccine um, manufacturing and uh, making sure that there's resiliency going forward. But the immediate need is to make sure that the manufacturers that are currently um, in trials for vaccine get all the help that they need to continue uh, getting vaccines uh, out into the public uh, in, in a, a more, more quickly. Right now, the supply is not meeting the demand. As we speak. As we speak, we not have not what we need it to be. No, no. As we speak, even now, um, we want to vaccinate 70% of the adult eligible population in New Jersey, which is 4.7 million individuals. Or to put it more simply, about 3,500 people a day need to be vaccinated in every single one of our counties. We're not even near having the vaccine necessary to do that. Wow. But I can tell you through the work of the Department of Health and the team here, we currently have over 259 sites ready to vaccinate between pharmacies, local health departments, federally qualified health centers. Every single one of our hospitals have stood up, our links agencies, and we will have six mega sites that can vaccinate two to 3,000 people a day when we have the vaccine. Okay. We will Commissioner be ready. I'm sorry for interrupting, Commissioner. By the way, we will have Governor Murphy uh, around the one-year anniversary. We'll be taping uh, in March with the governor. Um, by the way, also early in March on the 4th, I believe, is the one-year anniversary of a very serious operation he had for cancer, which was the first case of COVID, and he was right on the job. Um, Commissioner, can you give me a minute or less on the lesson learned or the lessons learned around the decision re regarding COVID patients going back into nursing homes? Yeah, there, there's a lot of misrepresentation about that decision. The decision was to return patients to their homes, which were the nursing homes, to return them to the homes after they had had a stay in the hospital. Uh, with a couple of caveats, you needed to have the appropriate staffing, the appropriate PPE, and you were, had to be able to cohort your patients. In other words, all of the patients coming back had to be housed in the same wing. That was very clear in the directive that I put out uh, and has been very misrepresented in the press. And that's unfortunate, but we've learned a lesson now, haven't we? This virus is unrelenting. It's back in our nursing homes. We have appropriate PPE. We have cohorting. We have over a thousand beds to accept patients from hospitals. If nursing homes don't feel they can adequately take care of them, and we still have the virus. Wow. Commissioner uh, Judy Persichelli, uh, the Commissioner of the Department of Health, um, a registered nurse, and by the way, to all the nurses and physicians and respiratory therapists, all of those on the front lines, it may be, people may not call them heroes anymore, um, but they'll always be heroes, and, and I, not just in my eyes, but way more importantly in the commissioners. Commissioner, thank you um, for joining us. You honor us by your presence. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Commissioner Persichelli, and we'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, New Jersey Sharing Network, Johnson & Johnson, the Northward Center, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, NJ Best, and by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by bestofnj.com and by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24-7 on any device with our Telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.